what is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the redmi note 7 pro and today in this video i'm going to be showing you the latest conquer os on this device and this is the version 4.7 official build of conquer os based on android 11 the build date here is 22nd september 2021 as you are noticing from right here and i'll put all the download links and stuff in the description and if you don't know how to flash this particular rom you can check out that card from the top right corner and you can find it out in the description too all the guides will be present in the description that i'll talk about so let's begin this video yes i have flashed the gapps included build over here and this is how my home screen looks like by the way the stock launcher here is the pixel launcher and everything works fine with this launcher but of course there is no double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen because this is a vanilla pixel launcher now in this stock launcher as you can see everything is working fluidly over here to the left of the home screen you get the google's discover page and you can scroll them right here and you can swipe up in the home screen to get the app drawer and that too is working fine swiping up in the home screen gets you to the notification or the quick setting panel and they are working fine too and this has this oxygenous kind of quick setting panel and here one cool thing is that once you connect to a 5 gigahertz network this is how it shows over here and as you can see there is the wi-fi 5 like written in the wi-fi icon if you're noticing that status bar icon right there the wi-fi icon it will show as wi-fi 5 on the like right side right bottom of the wi-fi signal it looks very cool except for that let me tell you the widgets are working totally fine as you can see i have added this subscriber account widget that is working perfectly fine here now let's talk about the stock camera shall we well this is a google camera present by default here yes this camera does lag a little bit here and there but most of the time it does work super fine as you can see front camera and stuff everything is working fine no issues whatsoever with that the night sight mode is also there and it should also work with the selfies let me take a quick selfie so that i can show you guys so this is the selfie with the night sight turned on and yes it does work super fine it has very good amount of details and i would say everything with this camera works perfectly fine no issues whatsoever as you can see there is this zooming option and also the portrait mode works fine i have tested that also in video let me actually show you if you go over here we have this fhd 60 fps option so you can shoot at 1080p 60 fps right here or you can go to 4k option and with that 4k you only get 4k 30 fps now as this is the stock camera or this is present by default and it has this like rounded corners if you're noticing on the top and stuff looks very cool the whole camera ui there is some more options if you want to go into that and if you want to go into the camera settings you just go here you just swipe down like this you can adjust the hdr and if you go into the settings you can turn off the save location camera sound etc of course and you can like customize it however you want to now if i go into the info as you can see this is the nikita gcam version 1.1 present by default here now from the lock screen over here if you do this as you can see it opens the stock camera yes the photos are locked because the screen is locked in the background you have to enter pin if you want to like see those pictures but you can of course take a picture from right here whenever you are in the lock screen too so that is great or you can take a video too one bug is that once you are in that camera as you can see it shows this device is unlocked but it is actually not it will still ask you for a pin or password now let me show you the frame width scanner speed over here and tapping on the frame width scanner it unlocks very very fast of course this rom has double tap to sleep in the status bar that works flawlessly and if you have noticed in the lock screen it does have that android 12 style lock screen clock it looks very beautiful and the clock does jump around once you are click clicking over here as you can see and over here we have the date and the weather and stuff but this mic option if you just do this from the like lock screen okay so yeah it does give you the google assistant as you are noticing let me show you okay so yeah it does work again the fingerprint scanner unlocking speed is very fast not a problem at all so yeah i have had no issues with the fingerprint scanner very reliable fingerprint scanner and fast experience now if you want to go into the about section that is present on the top right here in the settings let me show you by jumping into it this is how it looks like it has this bold about phone written over here and it has this conquer os logo right there and if you go into this conquer os version you can see this is the 4.7 version and we have this caf revision tag right here and the conquer os build number it shows also the build date which is 22nd september 2021 gapps it says over here let me go back and in the android version this is how it looks like of course and if you tap here you will see this has this android 11 easter egg so yeah that is not a problem let me go back the security patch here is not latest of september it is still of august 5th 2021 for some reason but yeah maybe they will update it in the future updates the stock kernel here is the vertigo 4.14.190 kernel now yes this rom does have the customizations but if you scroll down more in the settings 
on the bottom you will see there is the features theme customizer and the system so yeah first let me show you the system and you have a system updater but for some reason it shows your device will no longer be supported for regular updates as you are noticing right here if you are gonna look at the text this is what it says now let me show you the other things like the gestures here we have the quick torch and that does work let me actually show you right here if i press and hold as you can see the torch is actually working fine with the power button no issues whatsoever except for that so right now let me just try to take a screenshot with the three finger screenshot gesture and as you can see we do have this long screenshot edit share and delete option so all three options are present so you can take long screenshot or you can edit them you can share them or delete them from right here once you are taking a screenshot let me go back we have this prevent ringing and we have the power menu controls over here and you have the enable advanced restart option let me show you the power menu quickly here is how it looks like we do have this like smart home controls of like google home smart lights they are working perfectly fine no issues and if you tap on restart we have this strictly rebooting option to recovery or fast boot from right here then we have the system navigation gestures if you go into the gesture navigation settings you have the gesture bar length customizations so of course you can customize the pill bar length and as you can see i did customize it that's why my pill bar if you are noticing is looking quite long now there is the two button and three button navigations as well let me go back from right here we have the double tap to sleep on the status bar and lock screen both and both are working perfectly fine i have showed you that multiple times and yes quickly open camera is still there you can double press the power button button it will quickly open the camera and it does give me a haptic or vibration feedback so yeah no issues with that now the default keyboard over here is gboard on this gapps included variant and here in the theme customizer you get the themer and it shows right here so let me show you what options are present so we have the accent color presets plethora of presets that you get i have been using it with a purple but you can use it with anyone and of course we have the font customization these are the fonts that you will get we also have the google sense and stuff and of course you can change the icon packs and icon shapes both from right here and we have the android s style clock selected as the lock screen clock style but you can change it between these many options as you can see plethora of options are here so yeah you get huge amount of customization for the lock screen clock but i have been using with the android s that is the bigger kind of looking lock screen clock and that looks amazing in my personal opinion now let me go back from here to the features here we have the status bar and quick setting panel here it also shows the suggestions so you can directly go into the battery icon or something from right here but you can go individually with these two settings so let me jump into the first status bar and quick setting panel settings so here we have the battery icon style you can change it to these many icons and we have the battery percentage is inside or outside the icon and here we have the show 4g instead of lte black and white quick setting tile and you can disable that so right now as you can see the quick setting panel has become colorful so if you want that oxygen OS style quick setting panel you can just enable this one and we have the traffic indicator from here you can enable the traffic indicator on the status bar or quick setting panel however you want to now let me go into the lock screen and here we have the hide on lock screen option so it won't show you the global menus on the lock screen so that is a secure lock screen i would say and we have the lock screen charging info enabling option then the fingerprint authentication vibration and error vibration is there but let me tell you there is no always unlock with the fingerprint scanner yet in this particular rom and we have the transparent notification if you want to enable that and the hide lock icon is there if you want to enable that now here in the security we have the fingerprints of course i have assigned my fingerprints and that are working fine i have showed you that already and in the settings you get the quick unlock option if you want to enable that and lock screen timeout over here is there you can customize it and the face unlock and app lock both are there let me set up the face unlock so right now i'll just point the device towards my face and hopefully it will set up okay so right now it's done let's test this out so i'm gonna double tap on the status bar to make the device sleep and double tap to wake and as you can see it wakes up really fast and unlocks let me show you one more time so yeah very fast and snappy unlocking speed i'm just double tapping not pointing the device towards my face now i'm doing that okay so it stopped doing the recognizing so yeah right now as you can see this is blazing fast face unlocking as soon as i point the device towards my face it unlocks now let me show you the app lock this is how it looks like and we have this app locker like kind of instantly 15 seconds or screen offsetting option i'll do that with the 15 seconds and let me actually search for a particular app over here let's like lock this telegram app and here if i lock it and try to open it it is actually asking me for the pin or the fingerprint or the face data so right now if i tap the fingerprint scanner and as you can see it opens the telegram app so yeah it works perfectly fine no issues whatsoever the app lock 2 is working great 
Now here I have tested some benchmarks and here are the Android and Geekbench score on your screen with a CPU stress test. And here you can also see the PC mark performance score. Talking about the quick setting panel, this is how it looks like and you can edit and add multiple toggles over here. So no issues with that. But let me show you what things that I have added. I have the like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth right there, flashlight, airplane mode, auto rotate right there. Battery saver works super fine here. And the dark theme is there, the like Android 11 style screen recording is there. With that you can record the device audio and the microphone audio at the same time. And we have the hotspot, the do not disturb and the data saver and the heads up nearby share. Always on display too is there. Let me actually show you by enabling it and here if I double tap right now as you can see this is how the always on display will look like but yes the redmi note 7 pro has a ips display so it won't be really good on the battery life but yeah that's how it is i would say if you only want to use it you can but as you can see the double tap to wake somehow breaks once you enable the always on display but yeah that's totally fine nobody is gonna use the always on display actually so yeah i'm gonna just disable that for the time being but yes the option is there for the always on display the night light also works fine no issues with that but let me show you there is also this Moto sound option and this is the Moto Audio it shows welcome to Moto Audio you can continue right here and you get all of these presets and you can change this to whatever headphones you are connecting or something so yeah you can edit a custom preset too if you want to from right here so yeah a lot of options are there for the Moto Audio or the Dolby kind of sound you can put it to bass boost or something if you want to or you can go full manual so yes it does not have the me audio direct in the sound settings but it does come with this moto audio and that is great again in the sound settings this is how it looks like we have the media call volume etc and the vibrate for calls you can customize that and we have the dial pad tone screen locking sound charging sound etc disabling or enabling option also you get the volume panel changing option so in the sound settings you can change the volume panel to aosp compact audio tiled or the stock one by the way the stock one looks like this and you can expand it just like this very cool looking volume panel i would say not a problem here and you can put the phone into vibrate or silent from right here in the display settings we have all these live display styles and wallpapers etc by the way the wallpaper i'm using over here is from the wallp app and you can also get this on device wallpaper this is the default wallpaper of this rom so yeah let me actually go back and you can also change the grid settings up to like this 4x4 or the default one is the 5x5 let me go back we have the screen timeout etc and inside live display we have the color calibration the full rgb control of the screen is there and the brightness level you can adjust from here adaptive or auto brightness is there and if you scroll down more we have the rotation settings the colors are set to boosted by default and if you scroll down more we have the lock screen settings here we get the always show time and info that is for the always on display and we also have the wake screen for notification too right here and the skip lock screen option is there if you want to enable that after face unlock and we have the show lockdown option etc let me go back we have the double tap to wake and the enable blurs option and if you enable this particular option for the first time you have to reboot the device once to actually take the effect let me actually show you yes it does work if you're noticing the background and let me actually do this so yeah if you're noticing the background this blur effect you have to reboot the device once once you enable this particular feature and lock in charging info again is there let me go back to the battery settings well this is how it looks like but one con is there of this battery settings in my personal frank opinion is that you can't really see the full battery usage by just tapping anywhere over here. For that you have to click on the three dots then you can go into the battery usage then you can see the full battery usage. Yes the idle drain is like very less over here. I had the device idle for a long time and as you can see the battery drop was a lot less and it does drop about like 7 to 8 percent i would say overnight so yeah that is great the ideal drain over here for this particular rom is very less and that is really good to see then we have the battery saver the aggressive battery kind of thing and the adaptive battery is there also we have the full charge last about how long prediction and the screen on time on the bottom there is no battery temperature or the charging cycle showing up option so that might be kind of a bummer but yes those options are simply missing from this particular battery settings also talking about the battery, yes, the fast charging also works super fine with the 18 watt or a 33 watt charger. No issues with that. The safety net passes right out of the box, so that is a good thing. Without even flashing magic or using magic kite, you can get the safety net passed, so that is a great thing. The DRM4 stays as L1 if you're noticing right here. So you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p on this ROM. Talking about the IR cluster present on the device, let me test it with this particular RGB remote app. And if you're noticing, yes, it does work super fine. I have tested this a lot of time. Yes, the IR cluster is not a problem on this particular ROM. And right now, let's test if the Google Assistant is working fine or not. Hey Google. 
as you can see it is working flawlessly let me try one more time okay google as you can see again google assistant is not a problem on this particular rom and you can of course swipe from the corners to also get the google assistant no issues whatsoever if you go into the backup and sync this is how it looks like in google photos and yes you do get the google photos unlimited backup with this rom again as the device is recognized as a pixel and if you're wondering how the recent panel is looking like you have the screenshot right here you have the select option and you can tap here to get an app into split screen or pin a particular app or you can go into the freeform mode or pause a particular app or you can go to the apps info from right here and you can go all the way to the left and you can clear all the apps from memory the ram management should be decent so what do i think personally about this conquer os on the redmi note 7 pro well i would say this particular rom is a really good daily driver for this device and it has the google camera by default so you get the really good quality pictures over here but yes for taking a picture it is a little bit laggy like if you're taking 10 to 15 pictures back to back then it might be a problem but other than that i don't see a huge issue over here so yeah thank you so much for watching this video guys give it a thumbs up if you liked it subscribe to the channel if you have not yet this is Tito from kdn tech signing off for today i'll be catching you guys in the next one bye bye now